Welcome traders to another Tickmill Earnings Report Preview with me, Patrick Munley. Uh, before we jump into today's report, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. The material provided is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Views, information, and opinions expressed by me in this recording are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report. We are looking at Snowflake, expected to announce a 0.01 cent earnings per share on revenue of 409.62 million. Despite investor fears, channel partners are optimistic on Snowflake's product strategy around price performance. Ample opportunity for Snowflake to land and expand to more Fortune 500 and Global 2000 customers as it transitions its sales strategy to focus on specific industry verticals. Many companies are turning to cloud computing services as part of the digital transformation projects that aim to gain business insights from crunching massive volumes of data. Cloud computing titans offer their own data analytics and management tools, but the cloud giants make Snowflake's platform available to their customers. The reason is Snowflake's tools are better at some key tasks, such as letting companies compile, view, analyze, and share massive amounts of data in an easy way. Nearly two-fifths of the Fortune 500 company use Snowflake software in the cloud as they move away from on-premise data warehousing products like Teradata, Oracle, and IBM. Uh, one Snowflake customer of note is pharma giant Pfizer. Pfizer uses Snowflake's tools to forecast product sales and to gain insights into the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. Snowflake is now nearing an annual uh, revenue run rate of a billion dollars. Uh, this is a big start, uh, milestone for software growth companies, but Snow stock is just turning profitable on an adjusted or non-GAAP earnings basis. The company has yet to turn a profit using GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles, which includes stock-based compensation. So let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns around Snowflake's earnings. Shares have moved high in the immediate aftermath of earnings five out of the six previous reports. On average, the stock moved up 4.9% in the first day of trading after the company reports earnings. Based on the previous six earnings releases, Snow stock is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 0.9%. On average, though, the stock has moved lower 1.4% one week after earnings. From a volatility expect, uh, perspective, options traders are pricing in a 20.2% move on this earnings release. However, the stock has averaged only a 10% move in recent quarters. From a flow and sentiment perspective, the notable buyer, 613 contracts of the $172.50 call expiring this Friday. And in general, options order flow sentiment has been bullish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has 45% expecting an earnings beat. Snow share price has drifted down 34.5% post its prior earnings announcement. Using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between earnings announcements is negative 8.3%. Let's pull up the snow chart here and see if we can uh, identify some trade levels of interest. From a technical perspective, obviously, we have been tracking this descending trend channel uh, on a broader perspective. We tested the equality objective versus the swing high at uh, $331. And buyers did step in there, <coughs> but failed to recapture the $250 level. And we've since seen a, another descent here. And we've got an internal trend channel, which I'm tracking. So this is going to be key. If we hold trend channel resistance, I'd be looking for any move through 126 on the downside to open a test once again of trend channel support back to the $84 to $83 level. From there, I'd certainly be watching for bullish momentum divergence uh, using the momentum study there. And any bullish reversal from that area, I'd be looking to engage on the long side, initially looking for a move back up into the 140, 150 level from that 84 to 83 zone. However, if we get a close outside of the trend channel resistance, I'd be then looking for a three wave corrective pattern to develop to take us up to test the trend channel resistance to the $212 level. Any close through that $212 should open a test of the high volume node at 233 As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.